there's not one single treatment for EOE. There's quite a few different approaches and it's quite individualized based on patient preference, family preference. There are two general categories. The first is medication and the other is dietary treatment. I'll first talk about uh, the first line that we often use is called a proton pump inhibitor or a PPI often referred to. That is used for not just EOE, but as a standard antacid, something that blocks the stomach's acid production. This is something that uh, we use for a variety of other conditions and can help even with healing ulcers and the esophagus. But interestingly, it has been shown even in EOE separate to the acid blocking that it does help patients' symptoms improve and in quite a few people even improve the eosinophils. The next type of medication that we talk about is called a topical steroid. So it's not going through the system, it's going directly to the esophagus. And this is a type of category called corticosteroid. This is not the same as what some people think about with steroids like the anabolic steroids uh, or affect any type of muscle strength or performance enhancing abilities. But these are the ones that control inflammation. They're, different versions of how to get it to your esophagus, but both are still called topical. The first is a liquid, uh, and the other one is a puffer. Uh, and both work nearly equally effectively, but they work directly on the esophagus and have benefit for the patients. The idea is, you know, we control the activity and the inflammation from the eosinophils from these medications. The idea is that we have it in our esophagus without any food or drink for at least half an hour and more time is even better. Um, one of the side effects of those is that you can get thrush, which is a type of fungus or candida in the mouth that's overgrown. So we do recommend that uh, the patient rinse their mouth and spit after they do and not eat for 30 minutes at least. It's true that, as I mentioned, the medications are borrowed from other conditions, whether it's from asthma or otherwise, but we are hoping that in the very near future, we'll have meds dedicated and specifically researched for EOE. Now, the other big category that we talked about was diet. Diet is something that uh, there's a wide variety and this has to be discussed with your treatment team, including your, uh, whether it's a gastroenterologist, it's great if you can work with an allergist and a dietitian, but um, there's a wide variety. We know that one of the more common of food eliminations originally was described as the six food elimination. It's not an easy one, but it's removing dairy, soy, egg, wheat, nuts and seafood from the diet for usually at least two months and then going back and seeing with the scope to see both if symptoms have improved but also if the histology or the number of eosinophils has improved and if it's worked for you then you go ahead and by process of elimination add back in the diet certain food groups and then typically go for a rescope re after that. There is inverted versions of that where they've gone for the most common triggered foods, which is called single food diet. And that'd be, for example, removing dairy. Uh, or there's other versions where they say maybe the fine balance between best yield and decreasing the number of scopes and not doing too many is taking away dairy and wheat. So that's called a two food elimination diet. No matter which way you have to have scopes to evaluate these. There is a lot of nuances and it's not something we tell people to kind of go about themselves. It has to be motivation from the patient, family and support to make sure that we're balancing whether it's, for example, there's other anaphylaxis and food allergies, which is not uncommon in this population uh, versus foods that they really are reliant on. What's their baseline weight? These are all important things kind of related to the decision of which foods or which things to eliminate or if to eliminate at all. There is also, you may read about or hear about an amino acid based uh, diet where essentially you can't eat or drink anything, but you have to drink only the specialized protein, like broken down protein formula. And that's called an elemental diet or an elimination diet related to that. It's not meant to be a long-term therapy. 
it's really meant to be to kind of stabilize or bridge, even if it's described as the most effective therapy where, you know, almost everybody having improvement of their eosinophils, it's not sustainable to only drink a formula, which in the past has not tasted very good. It tends to be quite expensive. And so as a result, we have to be thinking maybe for a few weeks if that's appropriate, but you need a longer term treatment strategy than that. Thank you.